I'm Trevor Robbins from the University of Cambridge, United Kingdom. I'm Martin Sarda from the University of Michigan in the US. Welcome to the 2017 FENS SFN Summer School from Castle Bertinoro, Italy. Well, I first got to hear about these schools by being invited to speak to one on addiction the previous year. And I was so impressed, not only with the faculty, but also with the students coming from literally all over the world to study together in this intense, interesting discussion forum. And so I thought, yes, um, I can take up this, this challenge if invited. And the topic of this year's summer school is chemical neuromodulation, neurobiological, neurocomputational, behavioural and clinical aspects. In other words, an interdisciplinary attack on this important topic by which slow neurochemical processes modulate the functioning of neural networks to mediate such important functions as reward, mood, stress, arousal and attention. The goal of this school uh, is to inform the students about current research approaches and concepts as they uh, concern the major neuromodulator systems of the brain. These are dopaminergic systems, noadrenergic systems, serotonergic systems and cholinergic systems. As we all know, the main symptoms of almost all neuropsychiatric disorders are associated with dysregulation in this neuromodulator system. So it is a very important topic specifically for researchers who have translational research interests. And this is something that has been in my sphere of interest for many years. And for that reason, I thought it would be, and it certainly was, extremely valuable to bring uh, major researchers in these fields together so that we can inform the students who came from all parts of the world and have, ha have had very heterogeneous educational backgrounds so that we can uh, inform these students about the current uh, status of our understanding of neuromodulator systems and of the uh, research approaches, techniques and concepts that guide our efforts to better understand uh, the regulation and function of these systems. I thought this was a very important uh, uh, goal, uh, and, and it's very often not so, not, or it's not so frequently handled uh, by, by other schools or training programs, and so we were very glad to, to help organizing uh, this important school. Yeah, one of the really um, exciting aspects of the meeting, I think, was that many investigators really concentrate on studying one system in isolation. But we were very careful at this school to have people compare the systems all together across the various modalities of investigation, whether at a neurochemical level or electrophysiological level, molecular cellular work, but also clinical work and computational approaches. And so I think we really got more out of the school than simply concentrated on a narrowly defined topic. Uh, furthermore, in order to uh, really make this a valuable and effective educational experience for the students, we were in close contact with the faculty of this school and uh, discussed with them uh, uh, the, the idea that uh, their presentations um, would really adhere to the goals of the school rather than primarily describing their own research program and their most recent findings. And we were very, very glad that uh, the faculty uh, really embraced this goal and offered uh, very well developed, very educational talks that really allowed the students to fully understand uh, the history uh, and the current um, uh, de uh, developments in, in research on neuromodulator systems. So the summer school template gives us a very nice framework for almost leisurely organizing a very nice program of talks in this general area. And we had about 10 speakers, I think. And what we tried to do was to have some speakers 
concentrating on human and clinical aspects, for example, and others on more basic aspects, electrophysiology, neurochemistry, and obviously behaviour in experimental animals. And so, for example, in the cholinergic system, we had Martin Sartre himself uh, talking about his wonderful translational work, which goes all the way from molecules to patients with Parkinson's disease. We also had Michael Hasselmo, who has a slightly different approach, focusing on computational approaches to the cholinergic system and slightly different areas of memory, for example, compared to attention. In the dopamine system, we had Tony Grace talking about his animal models of depression and schizophrenia in relation to electrophysiology of the dopamine system. And Mark Walton, who has a completely different neurochemical approach, which is more psychological in experimental animals. We had James Rowe talking about clinical aspects of noradrenaline and serotonin to complement Gary Aston Jones, who's a very basic scientist, and Zachary Maynan, also on the serotonin systems. And we had two fantastic clinically oriented talks, one from uh, Gita Musnudsen, who works on PET mainly, post emission tomography, and affective disorders in humans, serotonin, and Emra Duzel, who's going to focus on neuromodulation of the hippocampus. Yes, uh, the, the, the other idea that uh, helped us uh, structuring the program was to not necessarily uh, concentrate a discussion on one particular neuromodulator system on one day, but spread them out a little bit so that the discussion uh, among the students and between the faculty and the students uh, would remain more open and, and more comprehensive and would, you know, as opposed to, to uh, focusing on one particular day and one particular neuromodulator. Because certainly one of the goals of the school, uh, or one of the ideas I think we would like to instill in the student's mind, uh, is that neuromodulators in the future need to be studied uh, less in isolation, but the interactions between uh, neuromodulator systems in, in the context of specific behavior or disease models requires uh, more study. And the way we structured the school was in part designed to make sure that this message uh, will come across. This school in general, and the one I attended prior to organizing this one, were among the you know, most interesting and exciting schools that I've attended. Yes, we are very thankful to the faculty that they embraced the idea not just to give their regular science talk, but to serve more like teachers to, to, to introduce the students to, to the broader field and not just to their own research fields. It, it, was, it was really very, very impressive in that respect. So with our students, we wanted to broaden their viewpoints and expose them to the whole breadth of these enormous fields, um, comparing the different neuromodulators. At the beginning of the meeting, uh, when they introduce themselves, we ask them in jest, what is your favourite neuromodulator? Actually, dopamine seemed to win then. But what we'd like to do at the end is ask them again, and maybe they'll have shifted because they'll have you know, been influenced by some of the impressive talks about the other systems. So we want them to go away inspired and enthused with this area in all of its manifestations. The, the other important goal that you, the school achieved, I would think, is that it really allowed students to update their understanding of neuromodulator systems. The textbook versions of the regulation and function of neuromodulator systems really have not changed much in the last 20 years, while at the same time research has progressed very, very rapidly and has really resulted in a highly translational, highly sophisticated research on neuromodulators. And so we hope that the students go home uh, having an updated version of, of our understanding of neuromodulator systems, uh, that they can bring uh, that version home and that uh, it will inform uh, their own research and the research of uh, their colleagues. Uh, furthermore, as the students were able to network among themselves and also with the faculty, we would also hope that uh, these connections and relationships may have real impact in the future. For example, as students uh, search for postdoctoral positions in other countries uh, or search for um, research experiences in certain laborato laboratories, they now feel at ease, I would think, to contact the faculty and contact uh, other students they got to know here 
and to, to move around and have these experiences or have these professional opportunities. Yeah, so in sum, we hope the summer school also serves a kind of advisory and mentoring function as well to help them in their career development.